Well, praise the Lord, everyone, and I am so glad to be back with you again today. Uh, again, I am illustrating the significance of these masks, so please, please, please wear your mask. In fact, I need just to talk a little bit about that today again, and that is that all ages, please avoid gathering. I know uh, when I was your age, uh, I wanted to uh, hang out and I wanted to have a good time all the time school or no school college or no college I just wanted to be able to hang with a lot of people seeing that I am a social creature but the truth is that there are certain things we must do to minimize the effect of this disease and if we want things to get back to even close to where we were then there are certain rules we have to follow so I want to open with that even before I go into prayer, that it's essential for us to keep that physical distance. It's essential for us when we can't to wear a mask and even wear a mask when you're in public. Wash your hands constantly. Make sure that you keep your hands clean and keep them off your face. Please, 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 social distancing. Make sure that you when you're close to someone, you have a mask, they have a mask in public. When you go to the store or anywhere else, make sure that you do that and keep your hands washed, keep your hands clean. It's very, very important because this thing is serious. I lost another friend uh, last week and not only that, uh, one of my security uh, members is now infected. He can't figure out where it came from, but he does remember being in a group in his mother's or in his family's backyard and it was a group of people there. Uh, I looked at the funeral to Brother Malife yesterday, South Africa, in fact as of late at night because they're nine hours ahead of us and I checked that funeral out and I noticed again that people, some were wearing shields, others wearing masks, others, others weren't wearing anything and the choir was singing beside each other as pre-pandemic days. So uh, we don't want to go there. And that's the fifth largest disease-infected country in the world. We don't want to go there. We want to follow the principles of science, which is ordained and operated by God. We want to do that. I am telling you, please, 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 let's follow those rules and uh, see if we can get God to move on our behalf. While we're following the rules, we're praying, asking God to move this pestilence from among us, but we need to follow the rules. Please, let's do so. It is critical now to understand also that one out of 10 people is asymptomatic. Yes, symptomatic. One out of 10, asymptomatic, so be careful. You don't know who has it, treat everybody as if they do. Please, I, I'm telling you this as a pastor, as a person who's concerned, as a family man himself, please, please, please. Now, we are excited because Mother Finch is now 92 years old, moving around so well, teaching and preaching. She was doing it on the street and she is just an epitome of health and we thank God for her 92 happy birthday mother Finch I hope you're watching I hope you're tuned in and we just want to celebrate with you a wonderful 92nd birthday and that's just fabulous that's one of the things God does uh, as we go into prayer we're praying now for Pastor Lafayette Dorsey and his family and we're also praying for my security person who has uh, been tested positive and for all others and everyone who's in the battle now in various states around uh, this country and out of this country, we go to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we again praise you, we thank you, we, uh, we adore you because we realize it's only by your grace that we're able to stand. There are those of us who are still able to listen, to rejoice, because we have our faculties with us. We're not lying in a hospital bed struggling to overcome this terrible and awful sickness that has plagued the land. 
We thank you because we realize that we're standing by your grace and it's only through your grace that we're able to communicate one with another and we pray now that you'll keep us by your grace. Help us to follow the rules as best we can and then we will lean on you for miracle. I pray now for the prayer warriors who are standing before you night and day, hour after hour, supplicating and calling on you on our behalf. We want to praise you for them, not only those essential workers that are doing it from a physical and a social and a medical point of view, but we thank you for the essential workers who are standing and kneeling and calling on you from a spiritual point of view. So we pray now, Lord, that you will move on every aspect of our community, of our country, uh, and fix whatever is broken and give us the strength to go out and do those things that will make a change. And we pray now for every single person who has lost someone, particularly and especially today. We pray for Pastor Lafayette Dorsey and his wonderful family and the church that they will recover strongly through your comfort and through your grace. And now bless everyone in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Now, I want you to go with me to the book of Romans. Romans it is. And, and uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 5. But I promise to exegete a particular passage that I would like you to just be encouraged with. So I'll read Romans, but then I'm going to break from uh, the proper uh, hermeneutical systems and go into Hebrews for a minute and then get back into Romans. Now, I could stretch it and sort of tie it in, and maybe I will, but in this case, I would say to you that I'm accommodating the text. And that is, in order to be truthful and veracious as it relates to the text, then I would have to tell you that I'm going to do some accommodations in order to make a point. But uh, it's not a practice that you should follow. You can't accommodate the text all the time. Or if you do that, then you're not giving it its credulity and its credibility. And certainly, you have walked away from being integral as it relates to the scripture. But there's a particular passage that I think is important to all of us, particularly in this time. Uh, and uh, as I'm going towards it, I'm having an epiphany or I'm, I'm having a sort of retrospective glance to what I was thinking last night as I was preparing this. And I'll read and then I'll take the liberty to sort of go circumlocute or just dance around uh, till we get to where God would have us to be. In Romans chapter 5, I love this passage, beginning at verse 3. Well, I could start at verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope, I like that hope, of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, also knowing that tribulations worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. I want to focus there, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, it is important to understand that the writer in the book of Romans is actually speaking to us on the level of expectation in the glory of God. And it is an interesting dynamic because we are now moving into a season where we have to make some decisions as to how we are going to go forward. This is why the word hope becomes essential because now I'm dealing with expectation. And uh, 
the expectation of the child of God in this season is where do we go from here? I'm going to infuse this little conversation with the question. So many people have said that because of the Kairos moment of the pandemic and of course the protests, we are brought into a particular place that is, might I say, uh, decidingly different, uh, well, uh, definitely different from where we were pre-pandemic. The question is born out of that because now rationalizing the testimonies of the saints in many instances, and even uh, those clergy and preachers who are declaring that this season has brought us into a closer relationship with God. This season has brought us to analyze our individual walk with God. This season has intensified our prayer life. This season has given us a personal understanding of the word. This season has eliminated to a great extent the leader, the preacher, the influencer who stood between us and God, uh, whose attitudes and disposition was so overwhelming and oh, so overbearing in our lives that we didn't get a chance to navigate in the things of God uh, by ourselves and make the mistakes of navigating without total guidance and leadership and we didn't, this season has led us to where we've had to stand on our feet in our own families because we didn't have the fellowship of the saints, the hugging, the encouragement, the shaking of hands, the, all the things that go with being together. This season in many, many views has been a great, great eye opener and a great catalyst to move us closer to God. Now, the question that I'm asking is based on those testimonies. If this season has been such a benefit, then why are we fighting to go back to what we have declared did not benefit us totally as we're being benefited now? Why are we struggling to go back? In other words, I'm asking the question from this perspective, is going back going forward? Or is this the season where we have evaluated all of what was behind us that just didn't make sense and we're going to glean out of the season all of the things that were good and essential and important and viable and integral and useful and bring it over into this new season and take what we have, bring it over, that's good, and then let's see how God will take us from this point. That is the expectation that I'm talking about not an expectation that God will get me back to what I have found some weaknesses in. I'll give you an example. All the fluff is gone. I don't even think it's necessary for me to even give any thought of shaking my mic anymore. I don't see where that is even necessary for me to anymore. All of the things that we enjoyed doing that was just a part of what we did in terms of having church, now we've moved to a stage where we understand that that does not carry the real weight of my walk with God. My walk with God now has been brought down. It's been simmered down. It actually now I have brought everything down to just simply uh, in cooking, I guess it would be, I, I just simmered everything down until it's just a broth. There is no more excess. There is no more stuff that we have added. 
We are now just down to the core. And I'm saying, why should we want to rush back to something that had a lot of inadequacies? Now we want to rush forward to understanding God in the true light of faith and hope and expectation. And I don't want to go backward. I want to go forward into the power of God taking the things that I have learned. Because of that, I decided that I'd take a look at the book of Hebrews in light of hope that maketh not ashamed. And in order to deal with the hope that maketh not ashamed from the book of Hebrews, we decided to go to 11 and verse 35. So go with me. In 35, he talked about women receiving uh, by resurrection their dead and others were tortured, not accepting the deliverance in order that they might obtain a better resurrection. Now, when we deal with hope and the expectation of operating in the things of God, we have got to understand that any time we run into a situation like we're in today, a season like we're in today, that there is a growth that we receive. We c come from being just children until now we move into being sons of God. We move from the word technon into the word huios. And the Son of God is really depicted greatly in Romans chapter 8, where he shows us now as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Now, it's critical to understand that where everybody can be a child of God, everybody is who is born into the kingdom everybody's a child of god but everybody has not matured to becoming a huios or a son of god we're children of course because we're born into it but in order for us to become sons there has to be situations in our lives that bring us to a greater place of maturity. That's why I have come to this particular text here in Hebrews in order to embellish the word hope in Romans chapter 5. Hope that maketh not be ashamed. That maketh not ashamed hope that once I focus in on the expectation, I realize that God is not going to miss, he's not going to come up short in making me who I want to be. In the season pre-pandemic, it was about our show. It was about our ability to, with the lights and with the new way of having church, with the impressive way of, of, of having the LEDs and uh, uh, the presentation now is, is, is actually surrounded by the ambiance of the way that we delivered in order to reach the millennials and the zeers and all of that. Well, all of that is gone. Now we're simply in, uh, just look, look at where we are, just at home in a simple place with some books. And now we have brought it down because we are moving from just simply the floss and the outward show of our relationship with God to the inner core now, to the essential, watered down to the very rudiment and fundament. And so now you're finding not what is around you as much as what is in you right now. And that is what will bring us to that place where there is no shame regardless of the situation or the position that we find ourselves in. You are in a growth pattern. You are becoming a different person. Let me just break it down even further, if you'll allow me. In 35, when he uses the word torture, let's run the Hebrews quickly. They received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured. The Greek word came from torture here is tampanum. And what it suggests is that they were tortured in a wheel that was 
shaped for nothing but causing pains. It stretched the criminal's skin and they were horribly beaten with clubs and other things and this was the torture that they received. Now notice, they did not beg God to remove it. They did not beg God to take it away. They literally and actually refused deliverance because they were not going to deny their faith. I hope you see what it is. They did not simply say, I'm offering you deliverance, so come out of where you are. That was not the case. According to the Greek here, it suggests that they could have been delivered if they denied their faith, but they refused to deny their faith, and in refusing to deny their faith, they continued receiving the torture. I am at a point now where we are facing so much debate about the genuineness and the wholeness and the fullness of salvation that many people have turned their backs on God because of what they are going through. So they are willing now to denounce their faith, look back, uh, having the plow and look back. And what I've discovered now is not only have we removed the fluff of our presentation and the fluff of our worship and uh, our praise towards God, but now we are seeing a separation of those who were professing believing God from those who genuinely believe God because now we are put in a position where we have to analyze how real we really are. I, I love the play on words. How real we really are. The situation now is bringing us to the point where hope for those who are real will not be ashamed. Notice now, hope that maketh not ashamed. For those who cannot denounce their faith, they will move to a level where there is no shame. Even though I don't have the appearance of one who seems to be overcoming because I have not compromised my faith. I have not cursed God and decide to die. I have held on to my faith knowing that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord and I have a hope that maketh not ashamed. Now, Paul was very careful when he spoke in the book of Philippians. And he was saying that to die is gain, of course, but if I live, I live for your sakes. And he opened that by declaring that with the same boldness, whether in prison, whether free, whether locked up, I want to express the gospel with the same boldness. There is a trial that will test to see whether or not you're standing on the solid foundation of the Word of God. This pandemic, this time, this season is a test to see whether or not we are made of gold or whether we are stubble and wood. For gold, this season will simply take off the fluff, the draught, take off the impurities. That's why I open by asking the question, are we going back to all of what we used to do and go back to the kind of church service that was just a front? Or are we going to take after all of the impurities have been removed? Are we going to take the purity of what we had, bring it into this new season and wait for the direction of God to lead us where he wants us to go. I'm not trying to go back to anything. I'm trying to take what I had from what I used to do, 
that was good and take it and take it into whatever God has for us that's new. They were tortured, but they would not denounce their faith to receive deliverance. Now, here is the part I like. And others. Because when I look at the total Hebrews 11 until I get to verse 36, all I see is deliverance, greatness, power, a move of God, moving things, moving the world. And you would seem to think that that's where faith ends. And that's where the hall of faithers are described and placed. But now he interjects in 36 a different kind of disposition totally when he enters and others. When I looked at the and others, now I began to ask myself, what does and others bring to the table? The Greek word suggests, and it actually means, another of a different kind and others. The first kind were a group of people that everything they did and said, they receive the benefits of it immediately. Every time they prayed, they got an answer that brought deliverance, the dead raised from uh, the, the, the grave and brought into resurrection. Uh, things were spoken into existence and uh, Moses, which is a great bit of Moses, how Moses operated and he moved into uh, the wilderness when he was in Pharaoh's house and the greatness of him wanting to spend reproach with the people instead of enjoying the treasures of, e of Egypt. The greatness of Rahab and mentioning Gideon and Samson and all of these people who were power players in the hall of faithers. And you notice that it was all something that we would endeavor to be a part of because we wanted God to move. And for 35, 40 years, that's all we've been preaching, that kind of faith to overcome, to have cars and houses and land and all of that stuff. But none of us ever moved to the place where we saw and others. Yes, 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 yes and others, another of a different kind. And that now brings us from the place of Technon to the place of Huias, and this season is taking us to a place of maturity. Are you only strong when everything is going your way? Are you only strong when God has not allowed anything to bring scare and fright in your path? Are you only strong when you have no challenges, when there is no great upheaval of your life and your lifestyle has not been called on the carpet to change? Are you only strong when God hasn't put his probe down into the center of your heart to find is there a place for another of a different kind, an individual who has the expectation not only of things on this earth, but have a greater expectation of the things to come, of another kind. Oh, I feel like shouting on this one. Notice now, these others of another kind had trials of mocking. And what he's saying here is, this different class of victories was achieved by faith, although mockings and scourgings were endured by the martyrs that he's mentioning here. When he uses the word, I think the word moreover in this text, moreover of bonds, when he goes to moreover, he is now intensifying what they're going through because moreover is generally an expression of a climax. And what he's saying is they were imprisoned like Jeremiah was and they dreaded even more the scourging, but they were people of another kind 
whose hope maketh not ashamed. They would never have to come back later, look over the time where they've been through something and say, I didn't handle it the right way. I didn't go through it with the right kind of love for God, with the right kind of power for God. I don't want this season to end or we move to another place of comfort. And then I look back over this time and begin to find fault with myself for not giving God the kind of glory that I should have given him even in the middle of what I am facing right now and what we all are going through. Because if that is the case, then I would have stumbled. And in my stumbling because I have shamed the gospel and shamed my position in God and shamed my testimony that I had when everything was right. And now that I'm going through something, I'm falling apart and just withering away as if my expectation that I based on God has faltered and failed and it's made me feel ashamed. But you got to understand the love of God is shed abroad in my heart. Not my love for him, but his love for me. And that love for me means that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. This is the expectation that and others, another of a different kind, have. Not only are we on the mountaintop, that's why the prophets, the prophets are quick to prophesy now good times and everything's coming back. Because at the end of the day, that's all they know. They're locked into that. And I'm talking about the so-called seers. Because as Haniel will tell you and the Hebrew scholars will tell you that there are two types of prophets. There's the seer and then there's those that speak forth those that declare the word of God. And that's why Jeremiah was locked up because he told them that judgment was coming. Everything is not going to be rosy and easy. And even the seer who is declaring the word of God cannot declare everything is going to be rosy and easy and wonderful. They didn't tell us the pandemic was coming, but in the middle of the pandemic, they can tell us joy and peace and restoration is coming. Now, please, 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 that's why they locked Jeremiah up, because he had the unmitigated gall and audacity to say, things aren't going to get better, you're going to have trouble. That's why Isaiah was in a mess, because he declared, you're going into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, Assyria is going to waste us. And they said, man, you're false prophet, get away from us, give us something wonderful to hear. That's why Paul said that in these days men would heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Not the preacher's ears are itching. The people's ears are itching, so they get people who will always tell them everything is good, everything is good. Because if you have to go through something that is horrendous, we end up with hope that is a shame. I need somebody to declare the oracles of God. Tell us the truth. Don't play with us. Tell us the truth. Tell us we're about to go through a famine. Tell us we're about to go through hard times. But you realize this. We are not just anybody. We can also walk in the space of and others. We are another of a different kind. That is, we can declare like Job, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And this is not an outside relationship with God. This is an internal core relationship with God. And that's where you are right now. I am significantly glad that God has brought us to the place where we can see the whole picture. 
How am I when things are going good? How am I in the middle of a doubtful situation? How am I when the situation turns bad? Am I really who God said I should be? Am I really who I have testified about being? Am I really who I have declared I was in the middle of good times? Let me go further. This thing is, this thing is on me. If you understand now, when he talks about, we go to 37. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, uh, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. The stoning was characteristic of the Jewish punishment. And in tradition, they declared that Manasseh sawed Isaiah, uh, he sawed him asunder, with a wooden saw. Can you imagine the excruciating pain that he had? Now a man of his magnitude and his greatness sawn asunder. The fact of being attempted appeared in the midst of these terrible tortures because now in the middle of the torture they are being tempted to release and go away from the word or from where they stood. And it's sawing you asunder, give me a good word or we'll kill you. Give me a good word or we'll destroy you. And yet still they held on to their faith. What I'm saying to you now is, can I have and find a group of people who are another of a different kind, who have that hope that make it not ashamed, who will not release the power of who they are because of the torture of a pandemic or the torture of somebody not giving us the right kind of money, the torture of them not signing another stimulus package, the torture of having to deal with sharing to one another and giving to each other so that we don't have the excess that we have always had. Sawn asunder, but he is a another of a different kind than by slaughter of the sword, by sword slaughter. And this, of course, included mass slaughtering and the examples around the Maccabean period where they just killed and killed. Then they dressed in sheepskin and of the still rougher material, they went to goatskin. So now they were not as professional uniform, but because they had no material uh, for clothing, they just put on anything they could, and they still held on to the faith. The word afflicted here from the scripture is to press hard upon. So they were pressed in their mind. They were pressed physically, psychologically press spiritually they were brought down low and the idea is one writer says that the idea here is that they were hard pressed by their foes they were maltreated oppressed they were plagued and so they still held on to their faith now notice the next verse and this is about where I need to stop but notice the next verse uh, the next verse declares, and they were stoned as Sunday, yes, tormented. Now, 38, of whom the world was not worthy. And now, here is world. Notice, not earth, because the kingdom of heaven is in the earth, and the world system is in the earth. What he's saying is these men and women with all that they endured and all that they went through, they held on to their faith to the point where the system of the world was not even worthy that they were in the world. The life, the plane of the martyrs was so much higher. It was so much greater that the world drove them out thinking they were unworthy to live in it while the very opposite was the truth. 
And that is the men who thought least of them were not worthy of even having them in their presence. Can you imagine the kind of human being that you would have to be for you to have lost everything and everybody around you have everything and still your value is so much higher than theirs that they aren't even worthy of you with nothing when they have everything because their nothing is your everything when you have God and when you can hold on to the promise of God and you can understand that God is a God of evolution he is a God that moves us from one level to another and I declare to you that I'm going to do part two that God will take you to another level and give you a strength that no matter what comes on you physically no matter what comes on you socially psychologically he will give you the power spiritually to come through and to stand in the middle of all that you face it is not just simply to say to you things are going to get better it's to say to you you are better right now you are greater right now because you are a different person. I used to think and take stock of some stuff that now I have found is totally irrelevant to the strength of who I am. And I can declare to God that if you bring on all of the trials that Satan can throw your way and after everything has been done and the dust has been cleared and you're still standing, you're still holding on to the principles of truth and declaring to everybody around around you I am not just anybody but I am another of a different kind I can praise him when it's good I can praise him when it's bad I can praise him on the upswing I can praise him on the downswing I can praise him while I have it I can praise him after it's been taken away because I am a child of God no I've moved from child I'm still a child but I'm a son child I'm not a baby child, I'm a son child of God. And I declare to you that we are different because we are another of a different kind. And so we can stand in the middle of our trial and declare, yes, God is real, real in my soul, for God is real, for I have washed and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. My God is real, for I have felt him in my soul. I want to say to you today, in the middle of what we're facing, we have come to realize that we will not have hope that maketh a shame, but we are another of a different kind. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the declaration of who we are. And I thank you for bringing it to the surface, the power that we have that's within, that will not allow us to have a hope that maketh a shame, but we have a hope that maketh not a shame. And I pray, God, that you will take us to that place as we evolve into the sonship, into that greatness of your children, where, of course, the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us, not around us, but in us. We need that glory revealed in this hour so that as we go forward, taking the things that are precious and good and get rid of the things that you have now shown us, that it was just impurities in the gold. But we will take the gold of the pre-pandemic and bring it over into the post-pandemic. And wherever you lead us, we will follow. And we claim the victory now for the weak. We claim the victory for the sick. We claim the victory for families that have gone through suffering of losing ones. We pray victory for the essential workers in the hospitals. We pray victory for those on the hill who are working hard for the benefit of the country. We pray victory now in the next election. We pray victory for everything that you have declared for us. 
and we stand on your promises in grace and we thank you for everything you have done now please Lord save somebody touch somebody deliver and heal in Jesus name amen and amen and amen we're trying to go back everybody is but you got to understand go back to what we want to go forward with the precious things that we had before I got a stat last night that in this time of pandemic and through this means of the internet 80,000 more people have come to Christ than would have come normally 80 more thousand because we're reaching people who are not only in the church but we're reaching people that are outside the church and I'm finding this that somehow the gospel has shifted if you go to church you will find an older population because an older population my age and you know those who are around my age uh, we have a tendency to want to gather in a traditional way because that's what we have always done and generally we hit a comfort zone and at my age I don't want to change too much really but the age that we're dealing with is a computer online technical age and isn't it interesting when Israel when uh, the early church rather wanted to stay in Jerusalem here comes Paul and Paul became a plague to move them and scatter them into the place where God told them the uttermost part of the earth notice now then it was moving them physically into the uttermost parts of the earth to touch people who were outside of the realm of Jerusalem outside of their comfort zone so now they had to learn other languages they had to deal with other cultures they had to learn to eat other people's foods and cooking wherever they went yes the uttermost part of the earth then was a different place the uttermost part of the earth for me because I've traveled the world where I have not gone I didn't want to go I have seen it all around the world so I did that but what I didn't do was the uttermost part of the earth when it came to technology I hope you see the metaphor the uttermost part of the earth he scattered me to places that I had never been to bring and teach the gospel to eat other people's foods to understand their cultures to honor their cultures and to give honor where honor was due in order to present the word but I never ever got serious with the other uttermost part of the earth when it came to being online social media I never did so now pandemic has moved me to the uttermost part of the earth by putting me where the millennials are and the Zias are our kids come out born with these things in their hands they do not assemble like we did so what God did was say all right you all want to stay in these churches and have your little private club meetings now I'm gonna send you to what has become the uttermost part of the earth technology thousand more came that would not have come had we been in the church because this is their uttermost part of the earth that's where he sent us so now we're there and I'm telling you this whenever we assemble again with the good that we have taken out we cannot not do this because this takes us to a part of the earth metaphorically that we have never been to before so now what my job is now as pastor my job now is to make sure that all of the members of the city of refuge have something like this so that when we come on this way they can be aware of it so don't be shocked if I put a computer store in the church where you can come and get your computer and hopefully I can find a good price hopefully but this is where the Millennials and the Zias are 
And this is where we need to be. I thank Jimmy McGetty for that information on the 80,000 because that is very critical to where we're going. And uh, we just believe God for greater things. If you want to be saved, prayer at cityofrefugela.org. Come there. You need to come and email us so somebody will pray for you. People have been receiving the Holy Spirit. One particular sister received the Holy Spirit over the phone that I know of, and others have been touched by God in a great way. Prayer at cityofrefugela.org. Don't forget, please, please, please email us that is more important than your offering i'm not saying that the offering isn't needed i'm saying your salvation is more important than reaching out to give us an offering because we're offering you jesus christ and there is no money that can pay for that so please take the time if you're being moved by this message and god is touching your soul in any way that's not me that's god now moving to get you to email us, have the child, the son, the grandchild, email us at prayer at cityofrefuge.org. If you, you have our number, you call us. Call the City of Refuge, and somebody will get back to you. Others are calling people around now, but we probably don't have your name if you're not on our catalog, if you're not in our Rolodex. We're calling 100,000 people, but if you're not in that 100,000, then we can't reach you. But if you reach for us, we'll reach back for you because your salvation is important and essential to us. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing this means. And to the children of God, be strong. Stay strong. Stay safe. Follow the rules. Be healthy so that we can gather again as quickly as possible. Uh, don't just ignore the rules. Follow the rules. We are children of discipline. We're the children of principle. So let's follow the principles and then look for the miracle of God. Remember now to give, give and give and give as God has blessed you. Uh, give us in the various ways you see on the screen and uh, God will certainly move you. If a hundred of you will give us a gift of $50 Jubilee offering, we will certainly be grateful and thank God for you and your participation as you sow into the house of God to keep us operating and moving for your benefit there's food at the church of course grab and go the children are there and there's so much that's happening and so much more that will happen we're still working on projects for the homeless that will come to pass we're still seriously committed to getting people off the street getting them to a place of security and that's happening now we're working with city governments and other governments to make that come to pass so we have not stopped because we have not been around you. We are locked in, but we are not locked out. And that's the marvelous thing. God bless you today. God bless you and remember, you are another of a different kind and hope will never be made ashamed. God be with you.